Welcome to this edition of The Golden Rule. I hope I'm saying welcome once again because hopefully you're addicted by now and <laughs> you watch this every single week, you wouldn't miss it. But we call it The Golden Rule because Jesus said, do unto others the way you want them to do unto you or treat people the way you want them to treat you. That's The Golden Rule in a nutshell. And so on this program, we're trying to expose our viewers to stories that people have of their own lives, of how God has worked in their lives, which will hopefully be an inspiration and an encouragement to you. And today I have with me Sam Fegley. Hello, Barry. Bless you, Sam. I've known Sam for not quite, you weren't quite that. When did, when did we meet? When did your family come out here? Do you remember? I, I've known you before I can make memories, I think. Okay. Christian Fellowship. Yeah, oh, oh, sure. Yeah. Sure, okay. <laughs> it's been a long time anyway. And uh, so Sam and I have crossed paths on a number of occasions. Our families have served the Lord together in different capacities and it's been great. And uh, now Sam is at the place where he's gone through his school age years and uh, he's into adulthood making money and deciding what else to do with his life. By the way, it's important for every young person listening to me, don't think, here's what I want to do with my life. Don't think, I want to do, I want to dig ditches or I want to do brain surgery or whatever. Not what you think. Ask God. Make sure you ask God what He's created you to do because He's got a very, very special plan and He's equipped you for that. And if you're not doing that, you're not going to be happy. I don't care if you're making millions of dollars, you're not going to be happy because you haven't found your niche. You're like a round peg in a square hole. It just doesn't work real well. And so anyway, um, I've been impressed by the fact that Sam has, um, he's really got a heart for God and he seeks God and he spends time with God reading the Word. How, how long has that been a discipline in your life? Reading the Bible? Yeah. Um, a real discipline, probably a year. Just about a year? Yeah. Okay, before that it wasn't... Not a discipline, mm -hmm. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but after you graduated from high school, what did you do? Well, it was more what I didn't do. It's kind of my inaction that led me to YWAM. Uh, YWAM uh, is... Youth with a Mission. Youth with a Mission. We're plugging that program quite a bit on this program, <laughs> not intentionally, but God is using that ministry in a powerful, powerful way. So go ahead. Yeah, so uh, I just knew after I graduated, I knew I didn't want to go to college because I think I had a pretty good idea of what the college scene was. I know it's not easy for Christianity to survive there. Mm -hmm. And I was maybe at a fragile state. I knew that God was real. And I wasn't going to jeopardize that in the name of education or money or anything. Um, so I didn't apply for any colleges. But when people ask the question, you have to come up with something to do. <laughs> so um, my sister did YWAM, and that's what really... I probably wouldn't have done it if she didn't do it because i that's the only really way I knew about it. And um, I was trying to go to New Zealand, but this was during COVID and New Zealand was like one of the major lockdown areas. Mm -hmm. So I waited and I waited and then I just finally decided to go to Hawaii because it's, I mean, it's not a bad location <laughs> by any means. <laughs> Still. Um, it's still an island, um, but it was in America, so I didn't need to cross the borders to get there, and so it was pretty, it was pretty open still, and it was 2022 when I left, and, um, and then God was really, like, God was the center of my life before. But YWAM really helped me see what that looks like in every day and just kind of like pulled me deeper still. 
And I'm super thankful for that. Yeah, God really met me there. When did you start YWAM? What year, when, what, what month? It was in April. So I got to tell a funny story about you and us <laughs> because, so <laughs> he went to YWAM in April and it's a three month program? Uh, five months with five, outreach. Five months with the, okay, five months. So in August, er, yeah, August or September, I'm sitting out on the beach and all of a sudden this young man walks up to me and says, hi, Barry. And quite honestly, I didn't recognize him because I hadn't <laughs> seen him in a while. And not only that, the last thing in my mind is Sam Fegley because he just went left for YWAM in August. That was my recollection of when you started. So um, then when you, we connected and said who you are, then I thought, oh, he's flunked out already? <laughs> He went in August and here we are, just in September. Oh, poor Sam, what happened? But I was mistaken. You'd already been there and you'd been, where'd you go on your outreach? It was a two-parter. We started in Panama and then ended in Mexico. Oh, do you have any particular highlight experiences from either of those trips that you could share? <coughs> um, I have a cool one. Um, so during lecture phase, I had someone prophesy over me. It was a pretty obscure word. It was that I'd be riding a dark horse down a beach and it, it would be running fast. And I forgot what it symbolized, but I'm a really skeptical person. I don't think I really, I certainly didn't understand. I don't think I really believed in prophecy. Mm. I just didn't have any examples of it coming true. Or uh, it was at least a, a big mystery to me. Sure. I didn't really touch it. But in Mexico, it was lined up for us to, and I didn't tell anybody, it was purely, purely God. And I can't even deny it that uh, we ended up riding horses on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> and it clicked right before we were doing it. It was like, oh my gosh, this was prophesied uh -huh. over me. I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. And um, I remembered it was a dark horse and there were some dark horses there, but I was just not going to force it. I was just going to take the last one. I was going to be the last one to get on a horse. And um, it wasn't a dark horse. It was brown. It was the least trained horse and I had to be I was like right next to the instructor so it wouldn't run off or act up. And then just a few steps in, the person riding the dark horse got off because she wasn't, she didn't like riding horses. <laughs> so she got off and then the horse was open. But I, I wasn't gonna force it. I didn't say, uh, can I go on that one? Instead, the instructor asked me if I wanted to go on there and all I said was, yeah. Uh -huh. And and there I was riding the dark horse and it was well trained so it didn't have to be tied to the instructor's horse. And so I just got on and I asked him if I could run. And then we started running. Uh -huh. And it was just, I was on a dark horse riding a horse on the beach, on the which beach. is so random. <laughs> It's so <laughs> random, and it still gets me. Um, it's very significant, isn't it? You, to me, yeah. When God speaks a word to you, and, and I don't know, listener, whether you have a clue what we're talking about, <laughs> <laughs> but God speaks prophetically to people, and he tells them about things that are going to happen in their future. It's called prophecy. They're prophesying, telling future events. And it happens, and don't be surprised if it happens to you. If somebody comes up to you someday and says, you know what, I think you're going to end up in Australia or wherever. And, and you look at them and say, not cool. me. that's <laughs> not my plan. No, it may not be your plan, but God's giving you a foretaste, a preview ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Get you thinking. So now you're done with YWAM, you come back home, and... Uh, 
you're working with your dad, yeah. but you've also got some other activities going on here in the community that kind of got your heart pumping a little bit. What, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, me and Bree Price are partnered up, and you had her on the show the other day. Mm -hmm. We're doing um, youth ministry in different, different forms. Um, we have something cooking up right now going to be uh, some kind of summer program, mm -hmm. but that's very much in the works. Um, but what we have right now is like a Sunday afternoon, we'll get a bunch of high schoolers together, the kids from our church or whoever else wants to come. It's still growing, so we're sending out invites. Um, yeah, on Sunday, on Sunday afternoons, we'll go and do some kind of outreach for the community. And it doesn't have to be huge, but just like different ways of showing God's love to the people who should know. That's how and I'd put it. I was thinking of two scriptures as you're sharing. One of them says, despise not the day of small beginnings. Yeah. You know, you do stuff and you think, this is pretty insignificant. No, you got to start small. And once you take a step and you say, well, what if I took the wrong step? What if I'm going in a direction God didn't want me to give? I got a scripture for that one too. <laughs> the apostle Paul said to his sidekick, we got to preach the gospel. That's what God told us to do. So let's go to Asia. And so they got on their black horse. <laughs> and they're heading for, for Asia, and all of a sudden the Bible says the Holy Spirit forbade them. It means he said to them, you're heading in the wrong direction. How did he do that? Don't know. <laughs> Doesn't say. But it says very clearly that Paul knew he was going in the wrong direction. So he says, okay, let's go to Bithynia. And uh, his sidekick, Silas, says, okay, let's go to Bithynia. And then it says the Holy Spirit forbade him again. So now twice, he said in one direction, wanting to do God's will. And the Lord said, course correction, course correction. And then, you know, I think when I hear this, I think people say, I, I don't know what God wants me to do, so I'm not going to do anything until I know that God wants me to do this. And uh, the story I heard was, you can't steer a parked car. God will direct you, but if you're not going any place, He can't change your course. Mm. And so it's important. You know, you got you got plenty of what to do's right here. Jesus said, "Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, whether it's in Panama or whether it's in Mexico or whether it's in Detroit Lakes. There are people here that need to know what this book says, Sam. Young people." Hear me, young people especially, parents, Christian parents especially, hear me, you need to be having Bible studies with your children. Young children, get them understanding your dependence is upon God and their dependence will be upon God when they cut the traces and kick off on their own. So. Here we are again. We've run out of time, Sam. Did you know it? She, uh, she just held up two fingers like that. When Raina does that, she's saying, <laughs> <laughs> you're finished. Your time is up. So uh, I just want to pray before we sign off. Raina, do I have a minute to pray? Okay. Lord, I want to thank you for everybody that's watching this program today. I want to thank you for Sam and for Bree. And I pray for the kids that are in their little, little group that they would become tight-knit and they would become of one mind and they would serve you with zeal and fervor and uh, just be full of the joy of the Lord and the, the love of God and the peace of God that people see a difference in them say why are you doing this? why are you picking up all that trash on the street who cares well Jesus wants us to that's all Jesus wants us to do it and that will set an example to other people people are watching you all the time you know, they're watching you all the time. And if you do something unusual, like stooping down and picking up a pop can laying on the sidewalk, people are gonna say, that's weird. 
No, that's not weird. That's good stewardship. That's a good thing to do. So anyway, I say all that to say this. Do what you can to serve God while you can because we don't know how much time we have left. Jesus said the fields are white unto harvest, but there's a problem. Not enough laborers. Not enough laborers. You can be a laborer for Jesus and still work a job, a income producing, secular job, but you can be a minister on that job as well, either verbally or by your actions or a combination of the two. Okay, we gotta go. Thanks again for tuning in. Thank you, Sam, yeah. for coming. I appreciate it. Say hi to your folks for me. Hello. <laughs> That's not what I was talking about. I was talking about when you get home. <laughs> You think they'll be watching? Uh, maybe if I'm on it. They might just be, they might get hooked, who knows? They might want to watch Stephen Herb and Bree Price too, for all we know. Okay, God bless you. Tune in again next week. <laughs>